Prior to the assembly, you'll want to start out with a frame that's going to be really rigid for the CNC machine. The torture box will sit right on top of the, uh, this, the surface here. You'll want a, an area that you'll be able to use for storage, maybe for, for sheet stock, and uh, possibly an area that you will put your electronics and maybe the, the computer. When you're building the frame, you want to start out with a, as flat as possible, a framing on the top and that has no, no twisting or torsion from the, the front to the back. The actual table in the end that this is maintained. The dimensions I'm using for this frame, for the inside dimension so I can get sheet stock in, I'm using, I'm measuring it to be uh, 51 inches or 52 inches, actually 51 inches on the inside dimension, and for the outside dimension I have it as 57 inches. For the height, just so I get a good working surface, I'll be able to put sheet stock on and off and, and cut the parts out. I'm basing it on 38 inches. You, you would probably, this would be fine to go 36 inches, which is a standard height. And the length, I am, the length I'm going to keep at about nine and a half inches, nine and a half, nine feet, six inches, or 114 inches. The, the width is greater, it's gonna be greater than the actual table that's gonna be sitting on top of it. The table for torsion box will have the top layer is gonna be overhanging as a part of the assembly. So that won't be a problem with when it comes to clearance for the, for the gantry and for the rails. We're gonna start off with the assembly of the table. You're gonna have the actual table top has four pieces for the four by eight. Five by 10 will have five pieces and the six by 12 will have six pieces. We'll also have three different varieties of these interlocking rib pieces. There's a long piece, a medium, and a small piece. The medium goes in this direction. The long piece goes in this direction. And there will be, for the four by eight, will be two of these long pieces. And then in one, in one staggering row, and then the next row will be one of these pieces and two of these, one on each end of, the, um, of this piece. Now these are completely modular pieces, so these are really the only sizes you'll need to make any length table you, you need to make. All of the holes are aligned properly, so you'll be able to extend the table for as long as you want. For the bottom of the table, we use pieces like this. I wanted to figure out a way to make it so we can still mechanically fasten the bottom sheet of the of the torsion box table. And what I did is I used, because you can't get your hand the cross dowels, it's a large round piece that the screw and washer can, can stick out of. They slid into this location right here, completely fasten the table. You'll need, for the 4x8, you'll need just like the tabletop, you'll need four of these. These are going to be slightly smaller on the bottom part of it. It doesn't really need to be any larger. Okay, I've divided the pieces slightly to show what orientation these need to be in and what configuration. You'll have a small end, which is, there'll be two ends, which are around this size. One is going to be smaller than the other. By the way, this is also face down. The, the other side of it actually has counter boards for the, for the screws, so this can be perfectly flat. We're going to be looking at the underside of it. And as we're looking at the underside, looking at this direction on the right would be the smaller end piece and the holes need to be close to the edge. And on the second piece, the, all of the larger pieces are all symmetrical. It doesn't really matter what orientation you have, it's all gonna be correct. And at the other end, you have the larger of the two ends. And this will be on the left-hand side of the uh, table end. To get a good idea of how the ribs are gonna be sitting on there, the ribs are gonna be in this way. There's a slight variation in the dimension here, so you'll be ha have a little bit of wiggle room. The most important thing is that these are relatively flat, and they'll be able to sit flat on the table. You can take the longer piece and align it to see if you have the holes aligned. When attaching the, the ribs to the, uh, the table surfaces, I would start with the large piece first, and then attach the, the rib probably in this orientation. A cross dowel in this location, and you'll have a one and a half inch screw going intersecting the cross dowel. So what I would do is to put these long pieces on but do it on every other row of holes and we're gonna show that to you as we do it so starting the staggering we're gonna have a long piece on the side and have another long piece so it's gonna be long long and then the next row will be short long short the next row will be long long short long short long long and so forth so that's the staggering method we're gonna start with this piece here since this is gonna have enough more surface area to to use the screw in, into the wood and then we'll attach the end next and we'll go down the line with the next tops. Also, as you're fastening the ribs to the boards, try not to tighten the screws all the way. Let it a little bit loose so at the end you can tighten it and all of the boards are able to interlock. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> 
You'll need a total of 332 screws, quarter inch and one and a half inches in length. You'll need a total of 332 cross towels. Hey, look at Okay, so now we have finished the ribbing of the table and the top of the table is on the ribs. You'll notice if I push on top, there is quite a bit of torsion, which means that we still need the bottom layer to go on. And also, these are not tight yet. And now is the time to tighten all of the screws underneath or on the tabletop. We're going to flip this over. You probably don't need to do this on your own. If, you're, if you have clearance and you're able to tighten it to where you are, orientation, it's probably better to do that because it, this is quite heavy. But we're only doing this for illustration purposes to show you tightening at the top. But once we have this done, uh, once we have tightened the top and made sure that the rib is very secure to the top pieces, we're going to go ahead and put on the bottom flat pieces. And we'll show okay. that next. Let's go. You're going to have a whole bunch of things coming out, right? Don't let it go. Go. Yeah, I'm going to try it. 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 Yeah, I'm going